Hi, I'm Chef Jonathan Collins, and this is my kitchen. Join me for six exciting episodes of Cuisinart Culinary School, and I'll prove you're not too busy to cook. I'll teach you passionate, healthy, and simple cooking for your family. What we gotta do Answering questions about ingredients, techniques, recipes, and tools. Master French culinary basics, and you'll always cook with confidence. Beer batter is such a great way to enjoy fish. It makes it very palatable for everyone. Before I start, I'm gonna show you a remoulade or a tartar sauce, and we're gonna kick it up a notch with some fresh herbs. First in is some fresh chives. I'm just gonna break them and put them into the blender because it's gonna make short work of them. I've got fresh tarragon. I'm just gonna strip back the leaves, pulling them off the stem, and in they go. The tarragon is a beautiful, beautiful fragrant smell. Some capers, about a tablespoon. And I've got some gherkins, which are gonna add some sweetness. I'm gonna put all of those in. Next, I've got some whole grain mustard, and I like it because of the texture. It's actually one of my favorite ingredients to use. I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon or two of that. The smells coming out of this already are so good. So I'm now I'm gonna ignite them with this. I'm gonna put the lemon zest in, turning. Make sure I don't get the pith, just the zest. It brightens up the sauce immensely. Because we're adding mayonnaise to it, we wanna make sure that we balance the flavor. That's awesome. I'm gonna slice it in half and I'm gonna put some of the juice in as well. Juice in, no pits. Nice. And I'm gonna put a little bit about a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and a good tablespoon of paprika, smoky paprika. Let's bring that together first before I add the mayonnaise. If pulse that together and it started to come together, now I'm gonna add the mayonnaise and recombine for the rest. The nice thing about having a decent remoulade to go with this, along with the sliced lemons, is you have some fatty and some acidic. So it balances out the heaviness of the deep fryer. And one more press down the sides, just to make sure everything gets really well incorporated. And lastly, I'm gonna put a pinch of salt. I don't need any black pepper because I've got plenty of heat with that cayenne. Beautiful. This little chopper makes short work of it. Notice the beautiful color from the paprika. This is not your average tartar sauce. Perfect. Oh, that's so beautiful. Have a look at that. Let's pour this into our... That is beautiful. If you want to impress, this is the beer batter for you. It's simple, but it's light and crispy and bubbly and beautiful. 150 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour, two eggs, there we go, a reluctant egg, milk, one cup of milk, got some black pepper, and some salt. And I'm gonna put a little bit, a pinch of this paprika in there, just for a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor. And start to bring that together. And the finish here, once I've got this lightly formed, will be the beer. We put probably about a half cup of beer what the beer does is, first of all, it has incredible flavor, so it adds that to the batter. And what we've got is lots of bubbles. And now that that's come together, all I need to do is give it about two to three minutes to rest. And as it rests, all those flavors are gonna come together. It'll be a really well-developed batter, and it'll be ready for the fish.
Getting the right fish is critical to success. It can be fresh or it can be flash frozen, but most importantly, when you store it, it has to be stored on ice in enough room that it can drain so it's not sitting in the water. I've got ocean perch here and lake pickerel and the batter is ready to go. Let me check on my Cuisinart deep fryer and make sure it's up to temperature. 375 degrees and I'm gonna drop down the basket because I don't want to touch the batter to the basket, otherwise it'll stick to it and then I'll get uh, nasty results. These are going to go directly into the batter and I'll just start with a couple pieces here to show you a great technique to make sure that you get nice, light, fluffy, battered fish. First of all, let any of the extra batter drain off. You can see the consistency of that batter is perfect because it's coated it completely without running off. So we'll let about, you know, a couple drips just like that, then into the hot oil and I'm going to wave it just a little bit. What happens is I get aeration in the batter that ultimately keeps it up and allows it to float. So I've got one in, let's do another. Brings up another point, not to overcrowd the deep fryer. We want to make sure we don't drop the temperature of the oil to the point where it's not going to get uh, crispy and it's going to be oily and really heavy. Second one in and try to get them in at the same time as close to possible as well. Kind of keep track of which one goes in first. That should be the one to come out first. That one's in, now the big boy. And remember, the thicker the fish, the longer it's going to take to cook. So let's put this beautiful pickerel filet in. And again, the wave smells amazing. I'm just going to pull off the protective cover, which makes it so easy to use and keeps the vapors out of the air, and start to bring out this beautiful golden fish. Look at that. Now I want to drain it on a paper towel just to get rid of any of the excess oil. Those are three pieces of perch. Now I've got the last piece of pickerel. Oh, look at that. It's really important to season right as it comes out. When the oil is hot, what happens is some of that salt melts in and you don't have to add quite so much. A little bit of pepper, tiny bit of pepper. You don't have to add quite so much afterwards. And look at this spectacular finish. Can you imagine this going out to your family or to guests? It's absolutely perfectly cooked and it's so light and crispy that batter, I absolutely have to get into it here. Look at the way that perch curls up like that. I'm just going to dip it in. Oh. That will make you very happy. Whether it's fresh or frozen, you can get professional results in your kitchen with the right techniques and the right equipment. I've got some beautiful salmon, trout, and scallops, and I'm going to use the griddler. What I've done is I've turned to the griddle side, they're both up to temperature, and I'm going to lay it down so I have all kinds of cooking space. First thing I'm going to do is put some butter on the pan. I'm going to use just butter and a little bit of olive oil. I'm using the butter because I want the flavor and I'm going to use the olive oil to slightly increase the smoke point so that it doesn't burn. I want to point out that with this beautiful salmon, we've already removed all of the scales and I made a point of running my finger down along the bone line just to make sure that there's none of those hairpin bones. A little bit of light seasoning, so salt on the skin side first and some pepper and I'm going to lay two pieces, I'm going to just get them in some of that butter, two pieces of dill and gently, so I don't splash myself, lay that salmon right in all that beautiful fat. Skin side down because I want to crisp up that skin and get good texture going with that beautiful velvety pink flesh. A little bit of salt on the second side and a little bit of black pepper. That looks beautiful already. 
Nice little trick I love is to take a couple, one lemon and slice it into a couple halves. I'm gonna put that right beside the salmon and let that saute along with it. What that's going to do is it's gonna develop that lemon flavor and give me an incredible garnish. Next, something that some people steer clear of, which is uh, trout. And this trout, it has also been scaled. And so I'm just gonna give it a bit of seasoning. Again, a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. And again, skin side down. I wanna make sure that skin is crispy. I don't wanna have a mushy skin. I don't wanna let the steam uh, soften that. So I'm gonna so season side number two. And a little bit of black pepper. Oh man, it smells amazing already. Now a quick tip with the scallops. I've got some beautiful scallops here, but scallops, they have a little nerve on the side. It's what connects them to the shell, and I just make sure to pull that off. And with it often comes a little bit of sinewy type of uh, tissue that is just really unpleasant if you eat it. Here's the last one. Just gonna pull that off, and you can see that sinewy tissue, and that's gone. Now, same thing again, a little bit of butter and especially with scallops, the brown butter. Butter has different fat layers, and when you get brown butter, bernoisette, what happens is you get this nutty, beautiful flavor that is really second to none. And with the buttery texture of the scallops, it's a perfect match. So these are gonna be, be uh, just a light seasoning, again, salting on one side, and a little bit of, I'm gonna tighten that up, I want a finer grind of pepper. A little bit of black pepper. You could use white pepper if you didn't want the black appearance. And on these go. The most important thing when you're cooking any protein, and in particular with these, you see the spacing that I've got going there? That's really important. If I put them too close together, rather than sauteing, I'll end up boiling them. And I'll never quite get that flavor development that I'm looking for. Doing it, oh, the sweet smell of scallops is just intoxicating. Perfect. Gorgeous. A little bit of salt on the second side. And just a hint more of black pepper. The trout is just slightly thinner than the salmon. I'm gonna turn it now. That skin has crisped up nicely and uh, it's just about ready to pull off. Now with these almost ready, let's give them a turn. And what you can see is just that beautiful development from the brown butter. I give them a little stir to pick up some of that goodness that's around them. Turn, and as I do, I reveal that incredible flavor that's developed underneath. Now listen, one of the things that makes scallops really unpleasant is when they're overdone. They become tough. And, uh, and very chewy. It's important to pull them off just before they're done. In other words, touch them, and when they give just a bit of resistance back, you'll know that they're ready to pull off, and they'll continue to cook afterwards, giving you a perfectly cooked scallop. Let's check out this salmon. Give it a turn. Oh yeah. That skin has crisped up beautifully. And let's have a look at these lemons. They're coming along very, very nicely. I'm gonna move them just up a bit. And to finish this salmon off, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a maple glaze. Give it some sweetness. That'll caramelize when it hits the hot iron. And this is almost ready to go to the platter. These scallops are perfectly finished now. Uh, they have, I'm just gonna get them off because they're, uh, they're right ready to go. Oh man, the smell is just incredible. You wanna make sure that the turn of the salmon happens when the doneness is at about one third. You can see now this is perfectly done. Put that down on that platter. Look at that, isn't that spectacular?
seafood is a bit of a blank canvas. So with these shrimp, we're gonna kick it up a notch by adding lime, cilantro, and a little tequila. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the crust and or the shell and the legs, leaving just the tail on. I've already deveined these, and it's important to devein. Deveining gets rid of uh, all the nasty. There's a second shell off, and I've already prepared several skewers. I just want to show you how simple it is. I just grab the feet, pull to one side, and then the shell comes right off. Nice and cleanly, leaving you just the shrimp. Now, for skewering, hold the bottom, press through, and then just catch the point just by the tail. Again, press through the thickest part into the point just below the tail, and one last time. Now, to add flavor to these, I'm gonna start with a bed of fresh cilantro. These look beautiful already, we haven't even cooked them. Lay out the shrimp on the skewers so it can get into contact with this quick marinade. I'm gonna add some lime zest. I love the smell of zest. It just brightens it up so much. Next, some juice. Just squeeze that on. You can see that. That's gonna start to cook that already. The acid in the lime is gonna start to brighten that up and bring it to life. And then the best part for me, tequila, which is gonna bring some flavor, and it's also gonna begin to cook it and tenderize it. So we'll just leave that for demonstration purposes. I've done this on the platter at home. I would drop this in a plastic sealable bag, get all the air out of it so all that marinade can tuck right around the uh, shrimp. Now crab cakes, they're tender on the inside and nice and crispy on the outside. I've just dropped down my griddler to reveal both of those pans. I've got them both turned on high heat. I wanna make sure I'm up about 450 degrees on these when I'm ready to put down this food. I'm gonna start off with the egg. The reason I'm starting with the egg is I wanna just give it a quick whisk. And now I can simply dump in all the rest of my other ingredients. I've got fresh tarragon, which is gonna be gorgeous. Spring onions. And let's put in some of this beautiful crab meat. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Mm, lovely. Now I've got mayonnaise, three tablespoons. That's gonna make it nice and creamy and rich. And the panko. You can use other types of breadcrumbs, you can use crackers, anything that's gonna give it a little bit of body, a little bit of texture. Once all these ingredients are in, watch as I begin to fold this together and look how amazing this looks. The eggs are gonna bind it together and those beautiful panko crumbs are gonna give it some really beautiful texture. A quick season, salt and pepper. And another slight turn, just to fold that in. Some butter on the pan. I'm gonna be liberal with the butter. I want a nice, browned, crispy, crunchy crust. Perfect. And then it's as simple as forming these into small patties. Just take a large tablespoon, pull to the side of the bowl, and gently in your hands, begin to form a nice, round patty. You can do these large or you can do them, you know, bite size for a little canapé, whatever suits, you can make them. My skewered shrimp have marinated for about 30 minutes. They're ready for that grill. Let's get some butter on the grill again. Good hot grill is really important. Don't want to boil the meat. You want to make sure you get a really nice sear so that everything that's escaping out of the shrimp caramelizes on the outside of it and doesn't uh, just run away. So a quick season, a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of black pepper. Of course, these have the lime zest. They've got all of the, uh, look at that, we'll put those on. They've got the tequila, so that's gonna caramelize on it. The great thing is these are fast. These shrimp are starting to turn pink and I'm just gonna turn them over. As they begin to turn color, I know that they're nearly done. 
I want to get good coloring on both sides. I'm just going to finish by topping them with this little bit of cilantro that's left. And now let's have a quick look at these crab cakes. Give that a turn. Oh, look at that. That is so beautiful. They're nice and tender, which is what you want from that delicate crab meat. But at the same time, that butter has browned to perfection. After just a couple minutes on the grill, these shrimp skewers are ready to pull off. It's really important with shrimp to not let them overcook because they become tough and the texture becomes really unpleasant. So let's get these on the platter. Look at that beautiful shrimp. Easy to handle on the skewer, fast results, and we'll take some tequila, give our lime garnish, a uh, little bit of uh, drunk limes, little tiny little bit of finishing salt. Let's have a quick look at these. Look at the finish on these. Look at these crab cakes. Yes. Are you kidding me right now? Look at these. These are the picture of seafood. A little bit of lemon zest to finish those crab cakes. It'll brighten them up just a little bit. Oh, the fragrance coming off those is incredible. And there you have it. Two seafood dishes that have taken a blank canvas and just knocked it out of the park. This is a classic French preparation of mussels. I've already got some yellow onion sauteing in the pan until translucent. Into the pan is going to go some shallots and some chopped garlic. It smells incredible. I'm going to turn up the heat here, medium high. I've got some fresh thyme going in. So I'm just going to pull those leaves off the sprig. As soon as they hit the pan, they're just coming to life. Beautiful. One more sprig and a fresh bay leaf into the pan. I've got some white wine, cup and a half of white wine, just to deglaze the pan a little bit. And just before I go in with the mussels, I want to show you, first of all, you want to make sure you clean them first. Um, it's actually really good to massage them together. They have a tendency to knock off any of the nasty stuff that gets attached to the outside. The other thing is if they're not closed before they go in, if they're open, you want to make sure you discard those. If they are open, just give them a slight tap. Let me see if I can find one of these rascals that's open. Here's one that's partially open and I give it a slight tap and immediately he starts to close. So it's important that they're closed before they go in. Now this is going to go directly in. Oh, it smells incredible already. I'm going to cover and for two to three minutes on high heat. These are going to cook. These are going to steam. You don't want to overdo mussels. They become really tough and sinewy and very unpleasant. But as they cook and when they open, they begin to release all of the beautiful juice that's going to end up making an incredible sauce to go along with these mussels. Just give these a good shake. Have a look in there. Oh, gorgeous. I'm going to finish with just a little bit of cream. This is heavy cream or whipping cream. And a pinch of salt, sea salt, some black pepper. I'm going to finish with a bit of parsley now and a bit of parsley in just a minute. Another quick shake and I'll pull the lid. Let that reduce momentarily and as soon as it's reduced it'll be ready to serve. Look at that sauce. That is so rich and the fragrance coming from these mussels is just incredible. Seafood is by far one of my favorite things to cook and uh, I love the versatility of it. You should know that whenever you're preparing mussels, any that aren't open at this point, you want to make sure to toss those, discard them. 
but uh, no more talk of discarding. This is a great way to use uh, them as a little spoon. They're built in with uh, cutlery. Mm. And they're just perfect.